morning, welcome. This is going to be a gentle flow. I'm going to try to keep it to about 45 minutes. And the focus for this flow is going to be largely on the upper body, trying to open up through our shoulders and chest. Since most of us these days are spending a little more time on our computers than we might normally, using them both for work as well as for social connections. So if you find you are on your computer a lot, you're often hunching forward, so all of this starts to close up. You might start to give you some pain between your shoulder blades. So we're going to do some work to open all of that up. To facilitate that, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need something like a strap. It could be an actual yoga strap, a belt, a long strip of cloth, a long towel, whatever you have access to. Don't stress about it too much. Just something that's going to be able to extend your reach somewhat. Ideally, you're going to find something akin to a yoga block. This could be a firm pillow. It could be a stack of books. It could be anything that might get you a little bit of height. Um, so again, don't stress about it too much, improvise. And if you don't have one, I'll show you ways to work about it. Finally, you want something that you can sit on. So that can be a pillow, it could be a stack of blankets, it could be a bolster. So I'm using a yoga bolster that's got a little bit of height. And what we're doing here is that you're sitting right on the edge of this, which allows your hips to be higher than your knees and allows your spine to be a little bit more straight as you start to move. So gathering those things Pause if you need to, to come back, get settled into a comfortable seat. Again, with hips slightly higher than knees, you'll feel that your spine gets nice and straight there. And once you've gathered your various tools and gotten into a comfortable seat, close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath in and sigh it out. Take two more big cleansing breaths like that. Setting aside anything else that's going on in your life right now. You have about 45 minutes to just focus on you, on what you need, on your breath, on your body, and on being present right here. Now, either allowing your eyes to stay closed or gently open them, whatever feels more natural for you, start to focus just on breath. So as you inhale, inhale all the way down to the pit of your belly, feeling the belly expand with air. And as you exhale, draw the belly in and up. Engage through your core as you exhale. Continuing to breathe like that. Next inhale, draw all the way to the pit of your belly. When the belly fills, then allow the ribs to expand with air, taking in a little bit more breath. And as you exhale, ribs draw together, belly draws in and up. And finally, seeing if you can add on just a little bit more. So on your next inhale, drawing all that air in for the belly, expand the ribs, expand, and then finally, even the collarbones begin to lift. And as you exhale, collarbones descend, ribs draw together, belly draws in and up. Steady, full breath. And now set an intention for your practice. This doesn't have to be very complicated. It can just be one word. It could be presence, it could be peace, calm, strength, whatever it is that you need in your life right now, you'll find that usually what you need in your practice and what you need in your life mirror one another. Whatever it is that you're looking for. Take a moment just to focus on that word and bring that in. And then finally, we're going to start to move. We're going to start with a little bit of opening for the shoulders, and for that, you're going to need that strap. So to begin with, we're going to basically make this, they call this flossing your shoulders. So you're taking this back and forth movement, taking your hands pretty wide on your strap. You're gonna reach your arms up overhead and then see if you can take your arms behind you. If you have your hands too close on the strap, you're gonna find you have to shift your shoulders around to try to get it behind you. That's what we're trying to avoid. So if you find that, take your hands wider on your strap and then just take your arms all the way up over and behind you. And then bring them back to the front. Simply moving back and forth like this. If you hit a spot where it feels good to hang out for an extra moment, so here's about where my most intense spot is. I might want to hang out there for a breath or two and then continue to move. You don't have to move exactly in sync with my words or with what you're seeing. Just allowing yourself to move back and forth, opening up through your shoulders. And you may find after a pass or two, you can work your hands a little closer together on that strap. Letting the shape get a little bit more intense. And just give it one more round, taking it all the way up and back. And then bringing it all the way forward. 
Now taking that strap in your right hand, you're going to reach your right hand straight up to the ceiling, bend your elbow, letting the strap drop behind you. Taking your left hand, you're going to reach back, grab onto that strap. So from behind, it looks like this. Grabbing on, your hands can be as far apart as you want to be, they may be closer together. Once you get there, you're going to take your left hand and pull down on the strap. And you stretch through the right tricep. Taking a breath or two here. And then you're just going to change the direction that you're pulling. So you're going to pull up instead of down. So now feeling this in the front of the left shoulder. Depending how tight your shoulders are, this could be very intense or very mild. And then let that go and change it out. Now taking the strap into your left hand, reach up and over, drop it back behind you. Right hand is going to reach back, grab onto that strap, and then start to pull down. And changing it out, pulling up, opening up now through the front of the right shoulder. Try to keep my left and right correct. I don't usually practice as I teach, so if I occasionally get my left and right confused, I apologize, trying to make sure I mirror you guys. One more breath and then let that go. You can set the strap to the side. So now we're gonna start to open up through the spine, get some movement through your spine. Your spine moves in six different directions. So you have forward, you have back, you have lateral movement, and you have twisting movement. So you wanna hit all six movements of the spine. So to start with, we're gonna take essentially a cat cow, if you're familiar with that. We're gonna be doing that from a seated position, however. So letting your hands come to rest on your legs. On an inhale, you're gonna take your gaze up and let your pelvis tip back. So you're gonna arch through the spine on an inhale. And then on an exhale, you're gonna round your spine, belly draws in, pelvis tips forward, head drops forward. Three rounds to continue to move. Inhale, take your gaze up and back. Exhale, round the spine. Two more, inhale, gaze up and back. Exhale, round the spine. One more, gaze up and back. And then round the spine. And coming back through center, we're going to take some lateral movement. On an inhale, sweep your arms up to the ceiling. Exhale, drop your right hand towards the mat, reach up and over. Really driving down through the opposite hip, keeping it anchored in. And on inhale, come through center, exhale, drop to the other side. Inhale through center, back to the right. And then playing, maybe taking the gaze up a little bit, it'll hit a different spot, see if that feels better or worse. And then changing it out, always coming through center on an inhale and dropping to the side on an exhale. Two more rounds, moving with breath, inhale to exhale. Inhale, center, exhale, open up. One more each side, taking it first to the right, and then to the left. And then come back through center, pause for a beat. Last move, we're going to take some twists, so an inhale, reach up to the ceiling. Exhale, open up to the right. The left hand comes in front of the knee, right hand reaches back behind you to help you get the position forward. Gaze up and over the shoulder. Inhale, come through center, exhale, take it to the left. Inhale, center, exhale, right. Inhale, center, exhale, left. One more time, inhale through center, exhale, twist. Last one, inhale, center, exhale, twist. Come back through center, pause for a moment, let that land in the body. And then we're gonna take whatever it is that you're seated on, a bolster, a blanket, whatever it is, set it to the side, you're using it again at some point, we don't need it for the moment. And then you're going to come down onto all fours. If you find this is really sensitive on your knees, you can either double up your mat, or you can put a blanket underneath your knees to give yourself a little bit more support. And as always, if something doesn't work for you, just fast forward a little, skip whatever doesn't serve you, and use the things that do. So coming onto all fours, knees dropping straight out of the hip sockets, arms straight out of the shoulder sockets. Spread your fingers out wide, take a nice wide base. 
and then plant your hands firmly. Toes can be down or toes can be curled. See what works better for you. From here, you're going to reach your right arm forward, and you're going to reach your left leg back. You're going to make sure that the toes aim right down towards the mat so your hips are really square, and then focus on length reaching from fingers to heel. And you can either stay right here or add on by taking everything up just a little. And then either stay here or add on by drawing elbow to knee. If you do elbow to knee, give that three rounds. Exhale to curl in. Inhale to extend. And then set it down to change sides. Reaching the left arm forward, right leg back. Taking a moment to get stable. Aim those toes right down towards your mat and reach fingers to heel. Maybe taking it a little higher. Maybe adding on three crunches, elbow to knee. Extend, exhale to curl in. Inhale, extend. One more exhale, curl in. Maybe you lose your balance. Inhale, extend. Set everything down. Knowing you can take that for a few more rounds if you need. Otherwise, we're going to move on. You're going to curl your toes under. Press your hips up and back to find down dog. So the temptation in downward facing dog is to focus on trying to get the heels on the mat, which makes a really short stance. And so take your stance a little wider, soften your knees, and press your hips back more so you find more length through your spine. The actual goal of this posture is to lengthen your spine, not to get your heels to your mat. So you may find that makes the posture a little bit more comfortable for you. From here, we're going to start to flow. So on an inhale, shift forward to a high plank. If you need to walk your feet back or your hands forward to find that high plank, do so. And then keeping hands and feet where they are, Lift the hips up and back, a little soft bend in the knees, down dog. Five rounds to flow. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Continue to move on this as you come forward, lifting in and up through your core so you're not dropping towards the mat. Exhale, press it back. And then tiptoe to the top of your mat, finding a ragdoll. So ragdoll is feet hip distance apart, soft knees. Take your arms, grab onto opposite elbows, and then let your upper body hang down towards the mat. And allow the upper body to sway some forward, back, side to side, maybe twisting, seeing what you need. And then walk your feet a little closer together, either hip distance or touching, whatever feels better to you. Draw yourself all the way up to standing. You're going to lose my upper body for a moment, but inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, just forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, bringing hands to shins or thighs so you can really lengthen through the torso. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stand all the way up, mountain. You can add a back bend if you need one. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. One more time. Inhale all the way up mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. So where we're going to go next is we're going to move into low lunges. You can either do this out of a downward facing dog or you can do it from standing. So see what's going to feel better from your body, for your body. So if you were coming from standing, you would step your left foot back and drop the knee. If you're moving it from downward facing dog, you would step the right foot forward. Don't worry too much about size. Stepping forward, finding that low lunge. So either stepping back from forward fold or stepping forward from down dog. Here's where that block might come in handy. So if you don't have the block, you can bring your hands to your shins, or you can use that block to press into so you can lift up through your spine and open up through the hip. To make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to change leg. You stay on whichever leg you're on. So we're wanting to drop the hips towards the mat and open up here through the front of the back leg. Get more and more intense the more you take your gaze up and back and add a hint of a back bend. So you get as big as you need to get right here. And then notice if the hips are really trying to roll open, if so, try to square them up. You're going to get a bit more of an intense stretch. And from here, we're going to take it to gate pose. So that back leg, you're going to turn your toes to be for your leg row to be parallel with the back edge of your mat. So you're going to shift the back arm towards the back edge of your mat, lengthen it through the extended leg now, place your other arm up and out of the way. 
side step. Same thing for the bracket here. Take all of this nice and slow for the first one. And then we're going to move back into that front leg. We're going to find a twisted lunge. So back leg turns back out, toes curl under, same hand plants on the mat, lengthen through the back leg, other arm sweeps up, big open twist. And then finally dropping both hands down to the mat. Front leg is going to extend, draw your toes towards your face. Temptation here is to sit all the way back on your heel. You're going to lose everything in the stretch. It's going to become very simple, very easy and comfortable, which is not exactly what we're looking for. So instead, focusing on the hips going back and up. So you feel the back half of your front leg extend. So off your hamstring, calf, maybe even into your foot or into your lower back, depending upon where you are tighter. And now we're going to change sides, either by stepping to down dog or by stepping to a forward fold and changing legs. Again, seeing which way of moving works better in your body. So now as you settle into low lunge on the other side, you're going to start to add that back bend, either coming up onto your knee, hands onto the knee, or hands onto a block. Whatever feels better for you. If you've got furniture nearby, you can use that. And letting the hips drop towards the mat, and then letting torso arc up and back. We're going to take it into gate pose. Back leg turns in, so it's parallel to the back of your mat. Other leg extends long. Toes can be forward or turned or towards the ceiling or turned in. See what feels better to you. And then reach the other arm all the way back. Shifting back again towards the top of your mat. Back foot turns in. Toes curl under. Lengthen through the back leg. Same arm comes down to the mat. Opposite arm sweeps up. Big open twist, turning towards your front leg. Finally dropping the back knee, taking our half split, drawing your toes towards your face. And then taking the center of your chest and thinking about lengthening it towards your toes. So rather than really rounding and compressing, trying to lengthen. Knowing that you may need to be up on a block to do this depending upon your level of flexibility. You're not trying to match anybody else's level of flexibility, just trying to enhance your own. You can take all of that one more time, just moving a little bit more rapidly. I'm going to demonstrate this by stepping forward, but know that you could step back if you would prefer to down dog. So, coming to either forward fold or down dog, and changing legs. Low lunge, gaze up and back. Moving a little bit faster. Turn that back leg in, coming into what's called a gate pose. At least that's one name for it. Coming back to the top of your mat to find that open twist. Dropping your back knee, finding a half split. If you have a full split and would prefer to take that, feel free. And then changing sides, either stepping forward to forward fold or back to down dog and changing legs. Low lunge. Opening up, finding that gate pose. Coming back to the top of your mat for an open twist. And then dropping the back knee, extending to the leg, half splits. So any of these little flows, if you'd like to repeat them, you can always pause, take it one or two more times, however you need to take it. And then when you're complete, this time we are going to step back to down dog. You can just simply come back to all fours, curl your toes, press it back. Down dog. And step your right foot between your hands and turn your back toes out and come all the way up into a warrior two. I do not have a big enough space for you to be able to see everything, but you get the idea. So your focus here is you want to anchor down the outer edge of the back foot. If that back edge of your foot starts to come off, that knee is going to start to collapse in. This is not a very comfortable position. You want to drive down the outer edge of the back foot. Front knee. Rather than allowing it to collapse in, you want to think about that knee opening out towards the pinky edge of your front foot as your arms reach long. And take a couple of rounds to move. So you're going to straighten that front leg, let your arms drop. Exhale, drop deeper into your warrior two. Arms flipped. Inhale, draw it up. Exhale, sink down, knee opening out. One more time. Inhale, draw it up. Exhale, drop deeper. And all the way up, turn all 10 toes in. 
Take your hands, clasp them behind your back, lengthen down to open the chest, and then just bow forward, wide-legged forward fold. So your hands here can float off your back. They may barely float. They may come all the way up. Depends upon your shoulders and what works for you. And then release that bind, letting your hands come down to the mat. They could grab outer edges of your feet if you have that kind of limberness. Otherwise, they could simply plant on the mat and allow yourself to bow a little deeper into the fold. Coming up about halfway, you're going to take your warrior two to the other side. So you're going to turn your other toes out, back toes in, bend deep into your front leg, and come all the way up, warrior two. You'll note I'm no longer calling right and left. You take whichever direction you wish to start with, just make sure you hit both sides. On an inhale, straighten your legs, let the arms drop. Exhale, sink deeper. A few more times, inhale, straighten. Exhale, deepen. One more inhale, straighten. Exhale, deepen. Make sure that knee is opening out over the front toes. And draw yourself all the way up. And turn all 10 toes in. Maybe you can walk your feet in a little bit if that warrior two got really wide. And we're going to take a star. So for a star, you're just reaching your arms all the way up. So you would still be standing. Upper body's going here. Big, huge expanse. Just reach, 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 reach. And then let all of that go come down to a seat. So we're going to start to work more into the shoulders. I'm going to show what this pose will look like on your mat, but I'm going to do it from a seated pose just so you can see what's happening first. What you're going to do is you're going to take your right arm, you're going to reach it out long. You're going to take that arm at a diagonal angle so that your nose is about parallel with your thumb. And then you're going to roll open onto your side so you get a big, huge stretch through the front of that shoulder. So this is similar to that door style stretch a lot of us do where you put your arm in the doorway and then lean out. If you find this does not work with a straight arm, you could also do it with a cactus arm. So on your mat, what that's going to look like is you're going to come all the way down to your belly. You're going to reach that arm out wide, again, at that diagonal angle or cactus, and you're going to roll onto the same side. So your top leg can either come behind you, it can plant in front of you, so it can plant here, it can reach back behind you, really doesn't matter so long as it's out of the way. Opposite arm can press into the mat to let yourself get a little deeper in the twist, or it can wrap across your back. You're going to give it three deep breaths right here. And then gently release, let that go. And change sides, reaching your other arm out long. And then rolling on the that three deep breaths there. If you find that you just keep rolling over, the temptation for people in this pose is to take your arm too high, at which point when you start to roll, you're just going to keep right on rolling, roll all the way over. If you find yourself doing that, know that you're very normal. Almost all of my students do that the first time we show them this posture. So if that's what's happening, just bringing the arm a little further down or playing with the cactus arm, which makes it almost impossible to roll all the way over. So seeing what works best for you. At the end of those three deep breaths, when you finish opening up through that shoulder, release all of that, come down to your belly. So we're going to take a nice gentle back bend. So for our back bend, first back bend, we're going to take a sphinx. So for sphinx, you can stay facing long ways on your mat. So you can see what's happening here. You're going to come forward, your, palm, your palms flat on the mat, wrists right in front of elbows, shoulders over elbows. So hugging in. If you have a block, you can put it between your hands, kind of gives you the amount of space you need. And then you're drawing the center of your chest through your shoulders and arcing up. This is a very gentle back bend. We're lengthening forward and arcing up. If you feel compression here in your lower spine, take it a little lower and focus more on lengthening out than coming up. If, however, you have a very limber spine and you're not really feeling much here, you can take your hands a little wider and start to walk those hands out, extending your arms. They may be way up here. I have a very limber back, so I come really high, but you come as high as you need to so that you feel something happening. You should also feel a bit of a stretch through your abs as you're lengthening forward. A few more deep breaths. Good. 
and then release all the way down. You can stack your palms, let your forehead rest on the back of your hands. Maybe letting your hips sway side to side if they need that release. And then flipping all the way over to come onto your back. This is the point where you might also want to block, or you could use whatever you use to prop your hips up, just seeing what feels better to you. But we're going to take a supported bridge. Again, we're wanting this class to be fairly gentle. So we're wanting to take something that opens the spine, but without having to do so with effort and strain. So as always, you can always take these poses more active than what, we're, what I'm demonstrating, but I'm going to give you the supported version. So for a normal bridge, you would take your feet hip distance apart, and you want your heels right underneath your kneecaps. So if they're too far out, you don't really have any way to push, you have no power. And if they're too far in, it's too much strain on your knees. So you want your heels right beneath your kneecaps. And from there, you would drive your heels into the mat and lift your hips. So we're going to add on by taking a block or a bolster, whatever you need it to be, finding whatever height feels good to you. So it could be the flattest height, it could be the middle height, but you're just going to place that underneath your sacrum. So it has a little bit of support. For me, I like it a little bit higher, but you find what works for you. And then you just take your arms out wide, close your eyes, and take five deep breaths. As you breathe here, you'll start to notice that the lower part of your spine begins to release a little and relax some. So you're getting the same expansion benefits that you would get from an active bridge. You're just taking it in a more relaxing, restorative way. The end of those five deep breaths. You can stay right here. You can also play with starting to extend your legs. So for some people, this feels really good to open up through the front of their hip flexors. For some people, it's too intense. If it's too intense for you, just walk it back out and find that supported bridge, knowing that's absolutely an okay place to be. So you're going to give it a couple more breaths. And then we're going to find our gentle inversion. So for our gentle inversion, keeping whatever you have underneath your sacrum, you're going to then just take your legs up towards the ceiling. I have a very narrow block, so this is a little precarious. If you have something a little more supportive, it's easier. Once your legs get towards the ceiling, you can flex your feet. You take your arms out wide. You can close your eyes and just breathe. Since you're probably at home, another way to take this would be to take your legs up a wall. You could remove the block and just simply run your legs up a wall. You are going to stay right there and breathe. So as you're in that posture with your legs overhead, it allows some of the swelling, the edema that we get into our lower legs to start to work its way down. Um, it shifts your perspective, getting legs over your head. And inversions are very calming for our nervous system. So whether it's an active inversion like a headstand or a passive inversion like this or taking your legs up the wall, either one is very restorative. It's very calming. Um, it's very grounding. Oddly enough, even though your legs are overhead, you'd think it would be the opposite. But it is very grounding and very anchoring and very uh, settling for us. I feel like it's something that we all kind of need right now. Take some time. How are we doing? Oh, we're doing good. Excellent. All right. So once you feel like you've gotten what you need to get out of this, you're going to bring your feet to your mat, lift your hips ever so slightly, and just slide that block out of the way. Now you have the block out of the way, you're on your back, you're going to take a very easy twist. You're just going to lift your hips ever so slightly and shift them about two inches to the right. Let your hips drop. Let your knees now drop to the left. Take your arm out wide, gaze out over the right arm. Once you get here, take a big breath in, pause for a moment. Sigh it out. Two more big breaths. Inhale. Exhale. One more in. And out. Coming back through center. Now shifting your hips back to center. And then up and over a little to the left. And then your knees drop to the right. Gaze goes back out to the left. Three deep breaths. We do that little shift in the hips to allow your spine to actually be lined up so that you get the twist out of a straight spine. Because normally when you move your knees, your spine shifts. So we've got to do that little adjustment. At the end of those three deep breaths, you're going to come all the way back up and we're going to move into some gentle stretches. As you come into these stretches, you can either take them simply seated or you can come back to that little prop that we used at the start of class. Give yourself a little bit of lift 
and you'll find that sometimes it makes the poses a little bit nicer. So what we're gonna take is a butterfly. The butterfly is soles of your feet to touch, knees wide. If you are very not limber, you may find that just simply sitting up tall gives you plenty of effect. You can also bring your hands to the mat behind you or beside you and find more length through your spine. If, however, this isn't doing anything for you, you can start to walk forward and bow forward. And play with what feels better to you. It may feel better to you to lengthen through the spine and get really active in the pose. It may feel better for you to allow the upper spine to round forward and come a little deeper into the posture. You find what works for you. And again, you're going to give yourself about five deep breaths to stay here and to open up. Move this out of the way. It's not actually helping me. So sometimes you find you come into a posture and what you try doesn't work, in which case you reset and you try something new. One more deep breath, exhale, allow yourself to bow a little deeper. And then inhale, draw yourself all the way up, pause for a moment. So we're gonna play with the placement of your feet now. So noticing where your feet were naturally and playing a little. If you take your feet further out, it's going to shift where you feel this pose. It's going to come a little deeper either into your adductors or into your lower back. If you bring your feet even closer, you're going to feel it more in your hips. And seeing what feels better to you. Take a really, really close butterfly for your second one or taking your feet really far out for your second one and moving forward. And as you come into the pose again, playing with the sensation of either lengthening the spine or rounding the spine, seeing what feels better in your particular practice, and give yourself five deep breaths. Thinking with every exhale, you're going to bow a little deeper. It may only be a millimeter. It may not be perceptible to anyone outside of yourself, but as long as you're feeling it, that's all that matters. Deep, even breath. And then finally drawing yourself back out. We're going to take our last stretch, but it's going to have a couple of different components. We're going to take a wide-legged fold. I like to turn sideways on my mat for this so that my heels are on my mat as opposed to on a hardwood floor. Um, if you're in a carpeted room, it may not matter for you. You're taking your legs as wide as you comfortably can, still allowing yourself to stay seated upright. So to start with, we're going to bow through the center. You're going to flex your feet. Thinking about aiming your toes straight towards the ceiling or even a little bit back, so seeing what feels better for you, but that idea of really keeping the legs nice and parallel towards the ceiling or a little more open. And from here, again, either taking your hands and planting them behind you to find lift, that may be all you need. If you need more, walking your hands forward, thinking about really lengthening through the spine as you bow forward, and you may even be able to round forward. You might also want to take that little prop that we had from earlier or a block, and then you can rest down onto that. Again, if this is not where you're coming, if you're staying right up here, that's absolutely fine. You go as far as works in your particular body. But when you get to your edge, from there, maybe even closing your eyes and taking five deep, deliberate breaths. So a big, steady inhale, slow, easy exhale. Not allowing there to be any strain in the breath. It's just easy and calm. You can bow a little deeper with every exhale. And then drawing yourself back up at the end of your five breaths. If it takes you longer than it takes me, that's absolutely fine. Now we're going to take that lateral motion that we did at the start of our practice, but we're going to take it over our legs. So you're going to take your right arm, you're going to bring it either to the top of your right leg or in front of your right leg, whichever works for you. In your left arm, you're going to reach up and over. So this may look like this, you may be all the way down. So trying to keep this hip, driving it down towards the mat, this left hip down towards the mat, and reaching up and over. Maybe you can reach all the way, grab onto your toes, and then gaze under. Maybe not. It's how it works for you. Using the right arm to help yourself get a little bit more twist so you're not collapsing forward, but really trying to open up or focusing here through the sides of the body, as well as here through the inside of the leg. Get one more deep breath. So depending upon where you hold tension is where you're gonna feel this particular pose. I feel it entirely through here because my upper body right now is very tight. You may feel it more through the leg. 
knowing that either one is absolutely fine. Now we're taking it to the other side. Find the left arm down, either on top of the leg or in front of the leg. Right arm reaching up and over, driving that right hip down towards the mat. Big side stretch. And coming all the way up. Now we're going to twist towards that leg. Again, trying to keep your left hip down on the mat. You're going to start to rotate towards your right leg and starting to bow forward. So again, this could be very, very upright or it may be bowing very far forward. You find what works for you. You can grab onto your foot and use that as an anchor. That might be able to be helpful to you. You find what works for you. Five deep breaths. Okay, and the five deep breaths coming all the way up, rotating now towards the left leg, right hip drives down, starting to walk it forward as far as you comfortably can, maybe grabbing onto toes if that's an option for you, and allowing yourself to bow as far forward as you comfortably can. This is another place where that strap we used earlier might be helpful. If you can't reach your foot, using that strap to help yourself start to bow forward could be helpful. You find what you need. Five more full breaths. And then draw yourself all the way up. Bring your legs together, maybe shake them out if they need. And you're going to start to come all the way down onto your back to find a Shavasana. So for Shavasana, you're going to lay flat on your back to begin with. But then notice if by laying on your back and taking your legs wide, if it gives you tension in your lower back, give yourself some support underneath your legs. So that could be a pillow, it could be a blanket, whatever you need, just to put a soft bend in your legs. And if you don't have anything to put underneath your legs, Bringing your feet come back into that, that butterfly shape that we were in earlier. And then coming down onto your back. So either letting the legs be bent, letting them be straight, whatever you need. Arms out wide. And close your eyes. And once you've found that shape, you close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Sigh it out. And bring your focus into the soles of your feet, into your heels, allowing your feet to relax down towards the mat, melting into the mat. Draw your attention up into your calves and shins, letting those unwind and release. Letting your knees relax. Thighs, quads, hamstrings, all of them relax and melt down into your mat. And glutes and hips and low back expand and release. Letting your stomach relax. Bring the weight of your mid and upper back on your mat, bring that connection, allowing yourself to melt down into the support of your mat. Drawing your attention now down into your fingers, letting them gently uncurl and expand. Palm of your hand release, backs of hands and wrists melting into the mat. Forearms relax, elbows, upper arms. Bring your upper back spread into the mat. Your shoulders expand, open, and release. Feeling even your throat, the front of your throat, the back of your throat, relax. And the muscles of your face release and let go. 
no need to hold any particular expression, just allowing it to be exactly you as you are. And the area right between your eyebrows release. And then even the top of your head, allow it to release. And then picture there right at the top of your head, a healing light. See that light begin to expand and flow down across your body, all across your face, your head, your throat, your neck, chest, down arms, to fingertips, down your torso, to hips, to legs, to feet. See that light hover there, healing and calming. Allow that light then to settle into your bones replenishing and restoring you. And take a deep breath in and sigh it out. Allowing for a few moments to be still. Nothing you need to change. Nothing you need to do. Just resting into this moment right now. Moment of peace and calm. And then as you are ready, Bring some movements back to your body, wiggling fingers and toes. And stretch yourself out long on your mat. And then curl yourself onto one side and pause there a moment. And move from corpse pose, shavasana, into a fetal pose at the end of every practice. And it's a reminder that at the end of every practice, you get to start fresh. If you found something in yourself as you moved and breathed that you want to carry with you off your mat, it's available to you. We always have a fresh start whenever we need one. We just have to choose to take it. And then come to a comfortable seat. Your eyes can stay closed if that serves you better. Sweep your arms overhead until your palms touch. And draw your palms down to your forehead. May there be peace in your thoughts. Draw your hands down to your lips. May there be kindness in your words. And then down to heart center. May there be so much love in your heart. Open our eyes. The light within me sees, honors, and respects the light within each and every one of you who may be watching this. 